Here's an MVR for you that is, it's a year old now, but when we ran this, here's speeding in June of 2009. June 30th, red, ran a red light. 08 speeding, 07 speeding, 05 speeding, 04 had an alcohol violation. Should that person drive? They have a driver's license. They make me a lot of money. Probably not. How about this one? 09, careless driving. 09, an accident. 08, defective or unsafe vehicle. Defective or unsafe vehicle. Defective or unsafe vehicle. That's one crummy car. <laughs> Should that person be allowed to drive? You don't have to have a clear driver's license. It doesn't need to be completely clear, but you have to have some criteria and you need to be consistent with it. Okay, will this really work? How about these strategies? I took the company car away and he now drives his own vehicle. That solves the problem, doesn't it? How many of you in here can say that your companies have done that? One. Surprise is not higher. Um, that may shift the focus for a little bit, but ultimately if someone's driving their own vehicle, on company business and they have a multi-million dollar loss, it's coming to you and there's really no way around it. It just isn't going to happen. So you need to treat people who drive their own vehicles on company business the same way because if they have $100,000 limits of liability, that's really all you've got is that buffer. So a small fender bender or a small bodily injury, you'll never see it. But if there's major bodily injury involved, you're going to see that claim legally. How about that own person's auto liability limits? How do you even know they have insurance? People with really poor driving records oftentimes go without insurance, especially if they don't owe anything on their car because there's nobody making them do it. And what happens when that adjuster finds out that that person does drive 25,000 miles a year on business and he, when he rated his car insurance, he said, I drive to church and back on Sunday and I leave my car in the garage. I drive 12 miles a month. Think the claim could be denied? Perhaps. We don't see that really. Um, they get covered anyway. But, and this isn't only a liability exposure. Some of the worst workers' compensation claims we've ever seen have been the result of auto crashes. Try $14 million on for size. This one was a woman who was a marketing person, was drinking, and this goes back to early 90s, drinking in the mountains, went off the road, and she's now paralyzed from the neck down, has been on a ventilator ever since, since 1992. That's a $14 million claim, comp claim. And the other one I'm aware of is about $7.5 million in comp. That's a big claim. Both of those are big claims. So don't let this happen to you. That's quite a catastrophe there. I think that was the LA freeway on any given day, wasn't it? So what should I do? Have a written driver safety procedure. Evaluate and review all people who would drive company vehicles or their own vehicles on company business. Review driving records periodically. How often is periodically? And what, let me go back to a topic here. If you're, if you're relying on your insurance company or your insurance broker to run MVRs for you, if it doesn't get sent to them, they can't tell you about it. And there's often times where you think you're good because the MVRs were run, motor vehicle record checks were done. And then you find out that, well, we knew somebody was such a terrible driver, we never sent it in. Didn't put them on the driver's list. Are they covered? Yeah, they'll be covered. Carriers don't like that because insurance is a contract of ultra good faith. And if you start hiding things from them and they find out about it, they're not going to be a very good business partner anymore. Okay? Formalized driver review and training. You need to train your drivers even if they're driving personal passenger cars or small vehicles. Enforce disciplinary standards. Be consistent. Conduct post-accident reviews. Understand what leads to some of these crashes. And implement a substance abuse program, if you don't already have one. And have a cell phone policy. 
How many of you use your cell phone while driving? I do. A lot. <laughs> and I put this thing here, and I put it in the little coffee tray in the center of the console. And when I get a call, what do I do? I reach down, I look to see who's calling, I take my eyes off the windshield, and I say, or I push the Bluetooth and start talking. Now, if I'm at a stoplight or a stop sign, and I put that thing right there, and I see I get a text or an email, and I start looking at that, I'm stopped in traffic, and it, starts, it turns green and traffic starts to go, but I'm not quite done reading yet. What am I gonna do? I kind of finish it and start going like this. Is that good? No. So what I've had to force myself to do is put it in the center console and not look at it. And if I get a call, I can either take it with a Bluetooth or I just let it ring. It just buzzed right now. If I was driving, I'd probably pick that up and look at it. <laughs> so what I would tell you is be careful with cell phones because um, about half the states now have laws that require Bluetooth, right? or hands-free, whether it's corded or, hand, or uh, wireless. But there's a study done by NIOSH a couple of years ago that said that the level of distraction for a driver does not change at all whether they're hands-free or not hands-free. So why have state legislatures in about half the states done this? Well, it's a feel-good regulation. It's like, we care about public safety, so we'll pass this law and we'll, we'll say, uh, you ought to use a hands-free kit. And about half the states now outlaw texting while driving completely. It's against the law. Colorado is one of those states. They just passed it this last year. Um, so what I'd suggest to clients is have a cell phone policy that says that discourages the use of cell phone while driving and, and also indicate it's not an expected part of your job to use the phone while you're driving. Okay? And require the use of seat belts. And take advantage of technology. There is all kinds of technology out there. Uh, there's a company that provides uh, real-time MVRs where any given time you just look it up and it checks it immediately and gives you an email once a month, as frequently as once a month, that tells you if there's any changes in somebody's MVR from the previous month. How good is that? There's also technology that will capture video uh, of, of a crash. There's companies that will use, and, and GeoPoint Partners is one of them, one of our sponsors today. They use a device that plugs into the diagnostic port of a vehicle, and it gives you real-time uh, driver feedback. And you can tell if your driver is prone to jackrabbit starts and fast stops. That means poor driving technique. Okay, So keep those in mind. Take advantage of technology. Now what? Talk to your company management if you haven't already got them on board and tell them this is an important issue, engage their interest. Know that there's an ANSI standard out there. ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, is an organization that has about 11,000 standards. Not all of them are safety. Many of them are totally unrelated to safety. But about 800 of those 11,000 are related to safety in some way. And this was published in 2006, the ANSI Z15.1. And you know what it says? You ought to have a written driver program. You ought to have standards. You ought to have training. You ought to check driving records, et cetera, et cetera. Guess who uses that standard in court? Plaintiff's attorneys. And if you're not doing it, is it reasonable to follow a national consensus standard? You bet. How do you explain away that you're not doing that? The answer is it's really difficult, it's tough. Know that the standard of care will change over time. It's different now than it was a generation or two ago, especially with alcohol. When I became of driving age in the 70s, um, if I was driving drunk, it wouldn't be uncommon for the policeman who pulled me over to say, how far is home? You better get right there. If I see you out here again tonight, I'm gonna put you in the pokey. Now, if you're pulled over for drunk driving, do you get that consideration? Not now. And it's because society has said drunk driving is a problem. So you got to pay attention to that. The, the standard of care will change over time. And I think what we're seeing now is the standard of care with cell phones is going to change over time. And it's going to get more restrictive because distracted driving is an enormous problem. 
It's an enormous problem. What's distracted? Is tuning tune the radio distracting? Perhaps. Maybe. Depends on your point of view. Is it illegal to tune the radio? No. How about spanking the kids in the back seat? How many of you have had to discipline your children in the back seat while you're driving? Yeah, or adults who act like children anyway. <laughs> okay, how about drinking a soda pop while driving? Is that distracting? Well, not unless you spill it on yourself and then you're all over the place. Eating cheeseburgers while driving? It's all distracting, it's a matter of degree. Texting while driving? It's illegal now. It's also very distracting, much more so than eating. Uh, the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute uh, did a study about distracted driving, and I can get that information to anybody that's interested, but they did a terrific job in that, and they rated all kinds of activities in terms of distraction, and texting while driving was way off the chart. Eating while driving wasn't off the chart. It was fairly benign, okay? And the National Safety Council, as I alluded to earlier, they did a literature review this year in May, they finished it, of all of the data out there in terms of distracted driving and, and in some place cell phone usage. And they now suggest, the National Safety Council suggests that people don't use cell phones while driving. That's a pretty big paradigm shift, is it not? I use my phone a lot. If someone told me I couldn't use my phone at all while driving, I might say, holy cow, that's just, that's not right. But a generation or two ago, we said, what do you mean I can't hold a beer while I'm driving? That's not, I mean, think about that. So the standard of care will change over time. All right, thank you very much.